Hello and welcome to video 4 of this Cat Virus Vet School series Does Tommy Have FIP? Feline Infectious Peritonitis This video is for veterinarians only. In this video we will begin where video 3 left off with step 3 of the FIP diagnosis flowchart, the in-house laboratory tests. This is Tommy's biochemistry report. His albumin level was 27 grams per litre and globulin was 41 grams per litre, which is normal. If he had FIP, we would expect hypergammaglobulinemia. In a recent study, 89% of cats with FIP had hypergammaglobulinemia. So we put a cross against this part of the diagnostic flowchart. FIP is now really quite an unlikely diagnosis. To obtain the albumin-globulin ratio, you divide the albumin by the globulin, so 27 over 41, which gives 0 0.66. This is somewhere in the middle. If it had been over 0 0.8, that would have ruled out FIP conclusively, and under 0 0.4 would have been highly indicative of FIP. So we'll just put a question mark next to that part of the algorithm. The next parameter to look at is bilirubin. The cat's bilirubin level was normal, so we put another cross on the algorithm. Now we need to look at his haematology. Was he anemic? And if so, was the anemia non-regenerative? Again, the answer was no. His hematocrit was 41%, so obviously his bone marrow is working fine. We can put another cross onto the flowchart. The in-house machine lumped lymphocytes and monocytes together and his level was within normal limits. So although we don't have an accurate lymphocyte count, he likely wasn't lymphopenic. And we'll put a question mark next to that parameter. The next step would be to run an in-house feline coronavirus antibody test. Of the rapid immunomigration tests available, I would be happy to recommend the Speed Trio from Verbac or the fastest FIP from Megacore. Obviously, fastest FIP is a misnomer because it detects antibodies to feline coronavirus, not FIP. Feline coronavirus is the virus, and the virus is quite common. FIP is the disease and is rare. For screening cats who might have FIP, or for possible coronavirus shedding, it is absolutely essential that a test is sensitive. Sensitivity is more important than specificity in a screening test, while specificity is more important in a confirmatory test, i.e. at a reference laboratory. In 2015, my colleagues and I published a paper comparing the sensitivity of a number of feline coronavirus antibody tests. And incidentally, I would just like to give a big thanks to the many donors of both money and samples who made that study possible. This is table 3 from that paper, showing the sensitivity of the various tests which took part. Obviously it's too small to see clearly, so here is the information from that table made more clear. The best test overall was the feline coronavirus immunocomb ELISA made by Biogal. This is a test which is suitable for large veterinary practices and also for smaller veterinary laboratories. However, it does take about 40 minutes to run. Of the rapid immunomigration tests, two stood out as better than the others, the Speed F Corona and the fastest FIP. Verbat now make a device which incorporates FELV, FIV and feline coronavirus antibodies and it's called Speed Trio. Key message. A negative feline coronavirus antibody test, provided the test is sensitive enough, rules out a diagnosis of feline infectious peritonitis. However, a positive coronavirus antibody test never equates with a diagnosis of FIP, only that FIP is possible. So we now put a cross beside the feline coronavirus antibody test. Stepping back and having a look at the whole algorithm, we see that in the three steps we have examined so far, we have only one definite tick in the clinical signs box. Admittedly, that box is not complete, so there might have been a whole bunch of other things to tick, such as pyrexia or weight loss. 
but it has to be obvious by now that FIP is very low down on our list of differential diagnoses, and all it would take would be a normal alpha-1 acid glycoprotein, i.e. AGP, test from a reference laboratory to knock that possibility on the head. We've come to step four of the diagnostic algorithm. It's time to decide what tests we are going to request from a reference laboratory. We need to get out our list of differential diagnoses again and work through it. And that is what we will do in the fifth and final video of our series. Thank you very much for watching. This is Diane Addy praying for an end to all animal suffering. Goodbye.